It's no secret that on GCN Tech, we have our tools in the workshop provided to us via our friends at Park Tool. And today, we're gonna to unbox some brand new tools. We're gonna to have a good old nosy at them. I'm gonna get these grubby little hands on them, and then you could be in with the chance of winning them too. But before we go on, make sure you subscribe to the GCN Tech channel by clicking on that subscribe button, and also the little notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. Right, you've done it, and let's go on. Firstly then, what do we have? Well, we've got the EK3 Professional Travel and Event Kit. That's right, this is a tool case. It's not a briefcase that an investment banker in the 80s would have gone to work with, and neither is it something that Cliff Richard would have taken on his summer holiday. Let's have a look inside then. Whoa. Oh my word, we need a closer look inside. Right, let's look then at the actual tool case itself. Well, we've got a really strong, almost indestructible, I'm not gonna put it to the test, uh, case here with some aluminium edges around it too. Now, it is lockable. I've left it unlocked though, but if you've got colleagues like mine who have a tendency to take your tools, it's worth keeping it locked. Let's look though inside. Now, we've got a hinged lid, so it's gonna stay open, and then we've got masses and masses of storage inside. All these little elasticated sections here, so you can line up the tools as you wish. Now, mechanics tend to be quite OCD when it comes to these things, and everybody has a different arrangement. But here we've got the storage on the front, but then if we open it, we've got even more on the back side, and then here we've even got a little pouch too, so if you've taken any very small spare parts with you, you can put them inside of there, and they're not gonna get lost. We've even got a little removable one too. So this is like a, a tool board, if you like, like what people would have on their wall at home. But on the rear, we've got some aluminium hooks, which can easily hook over the edge of the actual tool case itself, or even over the edge of a table or something perhaps, so you get even more uh, variety of your tools to be laid out when you're working. Then inside of the bottom of the tool case here, we've got some aluminium dividers, so you can lay out any spare parts again or extra tools. But well, a toolbox like this is all well and good, but we need something to go inside of it, don't we? Now, we're not just gonna look at an empty box, are we? Instead, we're gonna fill it up with 56 items. How cool is that? So first up, we've got some traditional style spanners, and I'm not gonna run through every single item, otherwise we would be here for quite a long time, because I'm quite a, quite a connoisseur, I guess you could call it, when it comes to tools. So we've got some traditional style spanners here, uh, closed at one end and then open at the other. And again, you could just pop that away in the elasticated section and then line them up to your heart's content. Moving on then onto some of the specialist bits of kit. And first up, I'm gonna go for the adjustable torque driver here. So as you can see, ergonomics really does play a part with this tool. So if you're working on a bike just once in a while or maybe all day, every day, you wanna make sure that your hands aren't getting tired and they're able to do the job effectively. So by holding it like this, you can just work like so, rather than maybe trying to strain your arm or your wrist or anything like that. Now it's adjustable, like I've already mentioned, and that adjustment comes in the form of the amount of Newton meters that it can be set to. And it runs in between four and six. And just by simply turning this knurled end knob, you can adjust it by half a Newton meter per time, where it just clicks into place. And you can easily see there the actual level that it's set on. Nice and simple to remove the bits. And then if you're ever searching around for the bit of a screwdriver or anything like that in your home, you could well know how long it can take to try and find it. But the good thing is they're simply stored in the end of the handle. I like that. Hopefully I can win it. Another tool which is gonna come in with this prize bundle is this. It's a Y-shaped Allen key, if you like. So we've got a four, five, and a six millimeter Allen keys on each of the protruding ends. Now this is probably one of the most heavily used items in bike shops for so many years. The reason being, you can do something and when you come onto the next bolt or head that needs adjusting and it has a different size, you don't have to reach for another Allen key. And when time is the essence, well, it really does speed things up. And again, it's just working with this ergonomic style grip. Now, if you're more used to something traditional, like a normal Allen key or hex wrench, 
then yet we've got these two and one and a half millimeters all the way up to 10 millimeters. So if you're in some hard to reach or difficult to get to place, you can easily get it at an angle and just release that fastener. On the road side of cycling, I've got to say, we were actually quite slow to adopt a Torx head fasteners. Now they are different from an Allen key, as you can see here from their profile. And we've got a set of eight here in sizes from T9 all the way up to T40 because they are becoming increasingly popular with road bikes. Now they are inside of a green housing as opposed to the well, part tool blue. The reason being, this identifies them easily and quickly when you're in a bit of a rush inside of a workshop. A really specialist bit of kit and well, uh, you don't want to lose them, that's for sure. Now, in among all these tools, I really don't know where to go because I'm pretty obsessed when it comes to them. Uh, I'm going to pick out this one though, BBT9, bottom bracket tool. So we've got the tool here for a standard outboard bottom bracket. This one probably fits, I reckon, about 15 different types um, because they all tend to use that same pattern. Or there's a, you know, a couple of variations here and there, but they're not that common. Then on the other end, we've got the crank installation tool. So if you've got yourself a Shimano crank and you've got that little plug which goes inside the left-hand crank, you'll know that sometimes it can be a real pain if you can't find the release or installation tool. Luckily, it's fitted on here, so you're never going to misplace it again. Oh, why didn't I ever think of that before? I could go on and on and on, but something I'm really a big fan of, I've got to try and find it now because I'm blinded by the bling, are these cassette pliers. So you can get a standard chain whip, which of course part do offer, but these enable you to hold the cassette in place with one hand when it comes to removing it from the free hub body. Of course, you're gonna need a tool to release that too. And this, do you know what? I've been wanting one of these for so long because it's got the handle built into it. So you could well use a adjustable spanner, say, and a, you could imagine this is a freewheel removal tool or cassette removal tool. This is actually one for a bottom bracket. So we're covering more bases here. And yeah, you know, you have to just put it on there and use the, use the chain whips and do that. But with this, it's just simple. You don't have to worry about that. You just grab it, do it, release it, go. Big fan of this one. Really sturdy too. Right, we've also got headset spanners. We've got cone spanners. You'll know that if you've got cone uh, bearings on your wheels or so angular contacts, you can't fit a standard spanner in there. You do need something specialist like this because they are so thin, wafer-like. We've got a pair of chain pliers here too. So if you've got a quick link on your chain, really simple just to lock that up and also release disc brakes. You're catered for, rotor truing. Uh, we've got so much here. Spoke keys, scissors, pliers, chain checkers, you name it, it's there, tape measure. We've even got a bottle opener because, well, if you're working on a bike, sometimes you get a little bit thirsty too. Now this is all well and good having all of these tools, but if we're gonna fix a bike, we need something to fix it on, don't we? Now it's not just the 56 tools on the table and also the tool case that a lucky winner is gonna win. There's also the PCS 9.2 highly portable work stand. So you can work on your bike using it, you could clean it, you could even store your bike on it too. It's nice and light in weight, uh, just 16 pounds, which is about seven kilos, just a touch over seven kilos. And whilst I stick with the weight, it can support a bike of up to 80 pounds, which is 36 kilos. Thanks to the really sturdy design of the base there, it creates like a triangle, which is a very strong item indeed. So when you've got the bike here in the stand, it's not gonna topple over whatsoever. Highly adjustable in that it can go from 99 centimeters high up to 145, because I always find when I'm working on different components on the bike, I want it raised at a different level. When I'm on handlebar tape, I want it right in front of me. Rear derailleur, I also want that right in front of me. So it means not only can I raise it, I can always rotate it too. So this really easy to use head here just rotates and locks in place. We've also got just as easy to use the clamping mechanism. So it can go around your seat post, a frame tube. I would never recommend around a frame tube, but sometimes it's the only option, particularly when you're building a bike up from scratch. But something you should just be aware of here too, is even if you've got a really small amount of seat post out, just check out the depth of the seat post clamp here or the clamping head. It's really, really small, so particularly good. Even if you've got a child's bike as well you're working on, it's gonna fit in there. 
So it's great to see that Park have developed the claws, if you like, of this stand throughout the years to keep up with the developments of different frame and seat post designs. And actually another feature of the rotating head clamp is that you could even work with your bike over a complete 360 degrees. Particularly useful if you've got uh, troublesome internal cable routing to try and pull out and you just want to work at eye level, for instance. Yeah, I'm liking this, I'm liking this a lot. Now I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about this work stand about the portability. And well, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration about just how simple it is. First up, just release this knob here at the top, lock it back in place when you've dropped it down and you repeat the process with the lower one. And it's just simply a case of doing like so. Now this is really good because it means if you're on the road, maybe you're on a road trip with your cycling pals and you're the designated mechanic, if you like, you can easily put that away somewhere. Likewise, at home too, because even if you're really short of space, you could even take out this head, nice and simple, and that could just be stored away somewhere else. I love portable solutions like this. Someone's gonna win it as well. Here we are, the complete package of what one lucky winner is gonna win. The EK3 toolkit and toolbox and also the PCS 9.2 work stand. I guess now I should tell you how you could be in with a chance of winning it. Well, it's nice and simple. Follow the link in the description down below and it'll take you to a competition page where you can enter. And I must just say right now, I'm gonna be insanely jealous of whoever gets to win this. Right, remember as well to like and share this with your friends. Share it with someone who loves doing bike mechanics because this, could well make their year for them. Now, also remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here? Is it all right if I enter? No? All right. Good luck.